Guys, we just got huge news that a massive set of upgrades are coming down the pike for Ethereum that's gonna get this blockchain ready for prime time. This will unlock an insane number of use cases so that this technology can scale to mass adoption. Some are calling this Ethereum 3.0, except we're told we're not actually supposed to call it that. More on that in a bit. But in today's video, I'm gonna talk about exactly what these updates are, when they're going to happen, because some of this stuff is just brand new. It was just announced last week. Some of these things are gonna happen very soon within the next year. And and I believe if they nail this, then the network can absolutely explode. This paints a very bullish outlook for the future. So trust me, you're going to want to pay attention to this, whether you're an ETH holder, a developer, or even if you're not, you're just interested in cryptocurrency and where this space is headed. I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works the Ethereum technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to take advantage of all the insane opportunity that's happening in the crypto space right now as this thing heats up, then the absolute best way to do that is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash boot. All right, so let's dive in. But before I do, I always have to say in these videos, nothing I'm saying is supposed to be financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell or hold any cryptocurrency based on this information. This is for educational purposes only. But with that being said, let's talk about these massive upgrades that are coming on the pike. So just a quick background, if you're not familiar with how Ethereum has worked in the past and where it's going. So, you know, this is the number two cryptocurrency by market cap. It's the number one smart contract platform blockchain. Yeah, this has been around since 2017. And basically, whenever it came out, Ethereum was released as a prototype, okay, that was going to get upgraded over time to reach its final form. And it's been a long road up to this point over this series of upgrades. We've got just a few more upgrades coming on the pike to where we're just a few short years away from a really fast, scalable blockchain that can rival the speeds of Visa and accomplish the scale that we need for mass adoption. And what I want to talk about now are a set of upgrades that can take us there, some of which are coming in 2025, which is just around the corner. All right, so the first upgrade that I want to talk about is the Ethereum Pectra upgrade, okay? So this has a lot of things that are in included with it. And this is one that's going to come pretty soon that I'm really excited about because it unlocks a lot of use cases and potential that this blockchain currently can't handle. Okay. So if you look at any of these type of upgrade releases, all right, these can look pretty scary, pretty daunting. You see all these things called EIPs, which just stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposals. Basically, these are just, you know, lists of things they want to include into the blockchain. They go through this process of getting included and approved and then developed and then included into these releases. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of different EIPs. I'm not going to go into each one of them. I just want to talk about what I think is the most exciting. And the first one I want to talk about that I think is most exciting is EIP 7702. So what does this do? Well, basically, it's going to take your Ethereum wallet or your blockchain wallet that you might use like MetaMask and give it a whole lot of new functionality that it can't do right now. The first thing is a huge quality of life boost, which is basically allowing users to batch transactions. OK, so what does that mean? So right now, when you use the blockchain, you have to sign, you have to click a button on your MetaMask or whatever wallet you use every single time you want a transaction to go through. But what if you want to do a bunch of transactions, click a single button, and then let all of them go through? Well, that's exactly what this is going to allow you to do. So they give a basic use case like trading tokens. So that's one of the most popular things people do on a blockchain. They use applications like Uniswap. Or if you're ever on Solana, you might use Radium. I'll talk about that in a second. But if you're on an Ethereum-based blockchain, then every single time that you trade a token, you have to approve it first, and then you have to trade it. There's always two clicks involved, which is just really annoying, okay? So a huge quality of life boost with batching transactions is you could click a single button, approve the token, and swap it all in one go. So if you've used something like you know, Solana before, you maybe use Radium or some other decentralized exchange, they can do it all in one go. And now Ethereum is going to be able to do the same thing. Now, that's not exactly groundbreaking, okay, but it is a huge quality of life boost for the blockchain. But what are some things to upgrade that actually can be groundbreaking and can unlock new use cases and accelerate adoption, okay? Well, one of them is basically you know, these extra features I'm talking about get added to your wallet, which one of them is to basically turn your wallet into a smart wallet. So we have the concept of smart wallets right now that are controlled by smart contracts in the blockchain. But basically what this is going to allow you to do is to delegate some of the responsibilities for your wallet to a smart contract wallet or a smart wallet to do things on your behalf. 
So there's lots of things this can do, but one major use case that I'm super excited about is the ability to do things like recurring payments or automated payments. So right now we don't have a really good way of doing that. And if you look at any crypto-based application that might have a recurring revenue to where you sign up for ongoing payments, you can't really support that very well with crypto holders. So if you wanted to sign up for a service and pay on an ongoing basis, you'd have to manually pay every single time or maybe do it in a longer increment like an annual subscription. So this is bad for businesses and for users because they can't really take monthly payments well. And most users don't want to pay the upfront cost of a year in advance. But with this upgrade, you can fix all that, okay? Users can now pay for applications or any type of service on the web with their crypto wallet, perhaps in stable coins, to unlock a ton of use cases that we really can't do with crypto now. I mean, imagine, you know, paying for your Netflix monthly with crypto or any crypto-based application or even your rent for that matter. It's a huge sticking point for mass adoption. Another part of this EIP is that you can basically sponsor other people's transactions. So what does that mean? Well, basically it means that someone else could pay your gas fees for you, which is a pretty cool idea. And if you're thinking like, hey, what could I do with that? Well, this gets us to the point that people have been talking about for a very long time, which is basically having applications subsidize a user's transaction fees, okay? So if you have financial-based technology, it really makes sense to pay on a transaction basis, especially when you use Ethereum layer two, and it's very cheap and you can pay like a penny or sub penny just to do a financial transaction. Most people are used to that type of thing. But what if you wanna have a non-financial crypto-based application? Well, users could still, you know, put information on the blockchain, sign transactions, and then, you know, applications could actually subsidize those gas fees to where it's free for the user to sign something that goes on chain. I mean, just imagine all the use cases that can unlock that we don't currently do with crypto. We're talking all kinds of consumer crypto applications, games, social media, you name it. Now, these are some of the things that I'm most excited about for this particular upgrade because it's unlocking all kinds of new use cases for crypto and blockchain that we can't really do right now on top of Ethereum, but they're coming very soon. Okay. So there's other things including this upgrade that I'll just mention really quickly. You can do you have things like with your wallet where you can set spending limits, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, if you're running an Ethereum validator and you're staking with 32 Ether, lots of people have this problem where, okay, I've got 32 Ether, but then I've got just like a couple of extra Ether, right? Let's say like two extra Ether. Well, right now you can't just add those two extra Ether to your 32 to run a, a validator and like get more passive income. Basically, you'd have to have 32 more ETH to run a second validator. You have to have exactly 32. This is gonna allow you to basically uh, stake more than 32 ether per validator. Uh, other stuff like improving gas efficiency, um, improving transaction costs, and just some general things that are going to improve network throughput and scalability, which is always nice. All right, so that's an overview of the things that I'm most excited about inside of the Pectra upgrade, okay? We're talking about multiple upgrades here. That's the first one, okay? There's more stuff inside of there that I'm not going to cover in this video, but that's some stuff I'm most excited about. So uh, when is Pectra supposed to get here? Well, the good news is it's just around the corner, okay? This is expected to ship inside of 2025. It could be even as soon as the first half of 2025. And if that happens, then we're gonna see all this stuff that I'm talking about unlocked and developed starting next year. It's really cool. But what about the next upgrades? So after that, we've got the Fusaka upgrade. So this is one that probably won't come out before 2026, okay? It's gonna be a little bit longer, but it's not gonna see as many like, huge unlocks for the potential of the technology, okay? It's mostly going to be about enhancing the performance of the blockchain, not a ton of feature unlocks. It's going to get a little bit faster, okay? It's basically going to bring the block time down from probably 13 seconds to a, maybe about eight seconds, okay? So some, you know, just small quality of life improvements, but a lot more technical robustness behind the scene that I'm not going to dig too much to in this video. But after that, we have to talk about the huge upgrade that was just announced last week. So what is that? Well, this is the Ethereum Beam chain, okay? And this was just announced last week at DevCon. Some people are starting to call this Ethereum 3.0, although at DevCon, they're like, hey, no, we don't want to call this Ethereum 3.0. It's probably going to stick. People probably still call it that anyways. But basically what this is designed to do is be the end game for the consensus layer of Ethereum, okay? So what does that mean? Well, Ethereum's got multiple layers. You've got layer one, okay, which is essentially comprised of consensus layer and the execution layer. The consensus layer is the part that's responsible for all the different nodes in the network, you know, basically talking to one another, making sure they can achieve consensus, that new blocks can be added properly, and then we can validate the entire history of the chain so that it's tamper-proof and secure. So basically the whole idea is the chain that's there now is basically five years old. It needs some upgrades to get to that place where we can actually achieve mass adoption, and this is the implementation is going to be working toward it, okay? So what are some of the benefits, though, outside of just robust technical infrastructure that's going to make the blockchain a lot faster? 
Well, one pretty cool upgrade is it's going to reduce the Ethereum amount that you need to stake. Okay, so right now, if you're going to stake ETH natively on the network, you're going to run a validator, get that passive income. You have to, you know, stake 32 Ether. Okay, so that gets a lot of complaints from people. They're like, hey, you have to be a whale in order to stake ETH natively on the network. But that's going to change, okay? So that limit's going to be reduced from 32 Ether all the way down to just one Ether. Ether. Now, if the Ethereum price continues to go up, then, you know, that's still going to be slightly expensive, but you have to understand that that's huge for decentralization, which is a big hallmark of the Ethereum network. We want lots of people to be able to run, you know, validators across the world from home. And what it's going to do is reduce the barrier of entry and cost to do that. And as we, you know, get more technology to make the solo stakers for home staking so much better, it's going to be so much easier to run your own validator at home. You could do that. You could get passive income off of it and you could really help decentralize the network. So other huge things that are going to happen with this consensus layer is it's going to have zero knowledge proof technology in the consensus layer of the protocol, which is massive. Okay. So what this is going to do is unlock lots of benefits with scaling and lots of other things. But if you can compute zero knowledge proofs directly onto the blockchain itself, we're unlocking tons of use cases for zero knowledge proofs that we can't really do right now natively on the network. So what is a zero knowledge proof if you're not familiar with that? Well, basically, it's proving information is true without revealing the information yourself. OK, so the, I always use the Where's Waldo image. Basically, like if I gave you a Where's Waldo image and asked you to find Waldo and then I asked you, hey, prove to me you found Waldo without revealing his location. You could just send me a little cutout picture of Waldo and then I wouldn't know where he is. OK, we just prove that you found it. So that's one example. But how does that actually work to useful technology? Well, you could do things like prove that you are of a certain age to be able to do something without revealing your age yourself. If you want to get a loan for a house, for example, you could prove that you have a certain net worth without revealing how much money you have, all kinds of things like that. It opens up a ton of use cases for decentralized identity and just so many other things that we're just scratching the surface for. And that's just a couple of examples. So yeah, that's a few things that I'm really excited for with this final uh, beam chain upgrade. Again, people are calling this Ethereum 3.0. We're not supposed to call it that, but it's probably going to stick. So uh, when is this going to get here? Now, the beam chain is basically going to get in implemented incrementally. We're going to have a lot of small updates happen over time. And then what they call the quantum leap, which is going to be a huge shipment of the final form. And this is unfortunately going to take a few years. It could take up to five years to actually ship in its final form. Now, that being said, lots of people are going to be like, hey, that's way too long. Like, can we not accelerate this? So the good news is I think it could probably happen faster than that, okay? I think we've got a really bad reputation for like saying something's going to be soon, ends up being much later. I think they're probably pushing the deadline way down the road so we can surprise people and actually get it here faster. But also the good news is we're going to get a lot of other updates before then. They're going to make Ethereum much better, much faster, unlock a ton of potential before we even get to that point. So I think we're going to see a ton of benefits even before that day comes. All right. So last but not least, what's this going to do to the price of Ethereum? So, you know, as always, not financial advice. Nobody's got a crystal ball to know what the price of Ethereum is going to be, you know, tomorrow, six months from now, a year from now. But it's hard for me to think that this is not going to be bullish for ETH, the asset itself in terms of its price appreciating higher to the point that it is today. You know, Ethereum has come a long way since I've been involved in the space. We have Ethereum ETFs right now. I think a lot of people who are getting into Ethereum for the long term definitely see this as a solid technology bet, especially for things like real world assets, decentralized finance, and of course, all the other use cases that are going to come out with this new technology, with these new capabilities that we've never had before that people aren't even talking about yet. And so there's undoubtedly going to be a lot of you know capital that tries to front run that, catch that wave before it happens. So long story short, it's hard for me to say this is not going to be bullish for the Ethereum price in the long term. All right, so that's an overview of the massive upgrades that are coming down the pike for Ethereum and why they're going to be a huge deal for this technology to get it ready for prime time to take us towards mass adoption. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Did you learn something about these updates that you didn't know about? Are you excited? about what's here to come. Can you build something with this that I didn't even talk about in this video? I want to hear from you. And whenever you're finished leaving your comment, make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe. It really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, and you want to get your hands dirty and make the most of this opportunity in the industry, then the absolute best way to do that is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And so how can you get started on that today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time.
for watching Dappy Diversity.